Algebra 1 and of course um, review. So in this video we're going to be reviewing converting rates and then looking at sequences. So you'll need two things. You'll need your EOC review notes packet and your Algebra 1 EOC pretest. We're going to work in both of those documents. So let's review how to convert a unit rate. <coughs> so to convert one unit of measure to another, you want to multiply by a conversion factor. Look at the example. So the area of the carpet needed for a room is 193 square feet. How many square yards are needed? Um, so in order to figure that out, you need to multiply the square feet by a conversion factor, which tells you how many square feet um, how, sorry, how many square yards there are in a square feet. So there is one square yard in nine square feet. If we multiply our 143 square feet by the conversion factor, notice how our units, the feet squared, they actually divide out and we're left with the yards squared. So we get 143 over 9 yards squared. If you divide that out, that is 15.9 yards squared over 1, or simply 15.9 yards squared. Rates are ratios comparing different things or units of measure. So for example, $15 per 12 ounces. You'll see this a lot at a store, and particularly at a grocery store. So we like to think of things in terms of unit rates, so that means divide it down to one. In this case, it would be one ounce. So if you take 15 and divide it by 12, you will get 1.25. And in this situation, that means that it is whatever this product is, it is $1.25 per one ounce, single ounce. To find that, you simply take your numerator, in this case 15, and divide it by your denominator, which is 12. Now let's switch gears a little bit. Let's go to the, our arithmetic sequences. So remember sequences are a list of numbers that increase by addition or decrease by subtraction. And in this case, it's an arithmetic. Um, if it has that descriptor, then it's increasing or decreasing by addition or subtraction. So here's just a, a review of the formula. So any term, a sub n, equals the first term, a sub 1, plus d, which stands for the difference, the amount being added or subtracted, times n minus 1. And n stands for whatever term it is in the sequence. So the example says find the sixth term. So we're going to plug in 6 for n into that formula. And so on the right side of the equal sign, we'll do the math that we see there. So we'll subtract and then multiply. So our sixth term, a sub 6, equals 15. You can also use this other type of notation, which is called recursive. So if you look at it, a sub n and a sub n minus term, or minus n, n minus 1, stands for the current term and the previous term. So find the next term if the current term is 8. So the next term would be our current term, which is 8, and then in this case, plus our difference, but our difference is minus 2, so we'll subtract 2. So that term would be 6. Linear functions are arithmetic sequences. Usually we see linear functions in the form of an equation or a table, and in the form y equals mx plus b. So m, the slope, is our rate of change, and in this case, if you look at the table, you can see that we are increasing by 5 each time. Um, and then our b value is our beginning amount. So when x equals 0, that is what y is. And you can see in the table that that is 1. So you can write the equation y equals our rate of change, 5x, and then plus our beginning amount, 1. Now, a geometric sequence are numbers that increase or decrease by multiplication. <clears throat> so look at the formula here. The formula says a sub n equals our first term, a sub 1, times r, which is the multiplier, our rate, raised to the n minus 1. Now our example says find the sixth term in the sequence. And you can see that I have done that. I'll just back up a little bit here. Oh, a little bit too much. There we go. 
So now I'm plugging in 6 for n. So a sub 6 will equal 2 times 4 to the 6 minus 1. Then I'll simply do the math and find that the sixth term is 2 times 1,024 or 2,048. You can also use the recursive notation. a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times the rate. So we want to find the next sixth term in a geometric sequence when the current term is 8. So we'll say a sub the next term equals our current term times 2. So a sub, in this case, sixth term, equals 16. <clears throat> Exponential functions are geometric sequences. So we have those in the form of the equation y equals our beginning amount times our rate of change raised to the x power. So you can see here that our beginning amount when x is 0 is 4, and then each time we are multiplying by 3. So that is this value. All right, now let's do some practice problems, and we're in the notes packet. So a 54 box of ounce box of Cheerios is sold at Walmart for $3.56, and a 32 ounce box of the same cereal is sold at Price Chopper for this. So you might just want to grab the one at Price Chopper because it's less, but if we know how much money per ounce, we can see which is the better buy as long as you know you'll use that big 54 ounce box if it's the better buy. So let's look at the cereal from Walmart. Well, I guess I just assumed it was cereal. Yeah, there we go, I see cereal. All right, so you're gonna take your dollars and divide it by your ounces all the way down. So we get 0 .066, so about seven cents, a little less than seven cents an ounce. And then let's look at the cereal from Price Chopper. So that's $2.42 for 32 ounces, which is more. So actually the better buy is the bigger box of cereal at Walmart. Now you'll see problems like the second one where you have a mix of units. So a rectangular garden is 12 feet wide and eight feet and four inches long. What is the perimeter of the garden in feet? So one way is just to convert everything to one unit and then convert it back. So I'm gonna convert everything to inches. So 12 feet, I can multiply times 12 over 1 because there's 12 inches in a foot and get that the garden is 144 inches wide. And then I'll take my 8 feet and convert it, which is 96 inches, and add the 4. And so my garden is 100 inches long. So remember, perimeter is 2 times length plus 2 times the width. So I'll take 2 times 144, my width, plus 2 times 100, which is my length. So the perimeter of my garden is, is 488 inches. But I need to know how many feet that is. So I'm going to multiply it by the number of feet um, compared to inches. And so that ends up being 40 and 2 thirds feet. All right, so let's back up a little bit. Number three. <clears throat> so it, it, we've got this problem. If a sub n, I can do it there. Um, a sub seven, uh, we wanna find a sub seven. So the seventh term in the sequence, if a sub n equals, that means any term, five times two to the n minus one. So I'm gonna plug in seven. And so then notice we end up getting 5, which is our starting amount, times 2 to the 6th power, 5 times 64, so our 7th term is 320. Now 4 and 5 just want us to describe what's happening in these sequences. So look at the first one. Can you tell if it's geometric or arithmetic? See that it's a multiplying amount? So that means it will be geometric. Our starting amount is 64. <clears throat> and then what's happening is that each time we will be left with one-fourth as much, or it is being decreased by three-fourths of its original amount each time. Now look at five. Is that arithmetic or geometric? Well, see how we're adding an amount each time? So that is arithmetic. Our starting amount is six, and then each time 
see the plus four, we are increasing by four, a steady increase. The one on the left is an exponential function. The one on the right is linear. So which of the table is represented by this equation? y equals 8 times 4 to the x. Well, this is an exponential or geometric, so our starting amount is 8. Our multiplier is 4, so that means when x is 0, y is 8. So I'm looking at my two tables, and I only see one of them that fits that. So my table on my screen on the left is that one. All right, this concludes your review on rates, unit rates, um, arithmetic, and geometric sequences. If you want more practice, talk to your teacher. Um, you can also Google these topics for extra problems.